Well, those of you that know us, we're from Soho Photo Gallery, and at one point we were from Photo Photo Gallery, we're not with them anymore, um, and we were with another gallery called Nine East. And they were all um, artist collectives where it's run by the, the members of the, of the group. So for today, um, we are, we're going to give you an abbreviated, like a one hour, a two hour workshop, you know, in, in one hour, a little bit less. Um, and we're going to concentrate basically, basically on your portfolio. I asked Deborah to send you a link to um, an article, which is here. Uh, it's called Expert Advice, uh, Marketing to Fine Art Galleries. It's really, um, it's a very good article. And the uh, people who were asked to contribute to this article are, um, you know, they're in New York. So this is kind of like relative to everybody. Brian Clamp is one. And uh, the other one, her name is jumping out of my head here. I can't get it. Um, no. Anyway, another one and another one. <laughs> but in, <laughs> So we're going to go through uh, some of the, the stuff here. By the way, I got this from uh, a, a website called Wonderful Machine. And they had a lot of good advice on there for photographers, for artists, for galleries. They had resources. Uh, and they have a blog, a very good blog. And one of the things that I really liked about this article was reading the comments that came in at the end. Because um, whatever we tell you today, don't take it at, you know, this is the only way. Because anything I tell you or Lois tells you can be, you know, not for you. And it may work for somebody and it may not work for somebody else. Both of us decided in our careers to go with the um, collective gallery, the cooperative gallery, an artist-run gallery. Uh, the benefits there are um, some of them don't, re don't take any percentage at all if you sell. Soho Photo doesn't take anything. Um, you're your own master there. You, can, you control the shots. You can sit on committees and have a say in <coughs> what goes on in the gallery, you know, in the running, the, the look, the, 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 the operations, everything. You, you have your, your partner in, in, in with them, which is really very nice. Uh, commercial galleries, the you know, upside there is it sounds like you know, it's much more prestigious and somebody's handling your work. But don't be fooled, because we're also a part of another gallery way out east on Long Island in Kutchog that's a privately owned gallery. And a wonderful gallerist there, Alex Ferrone, runs that space. And, um, but you do have to do a lot of work. You're expected to um, share and post your stuff on Facebook and Twitter with her. Um, do your own, you know, your own, um, get your guests there. She asks you how many people are coming and who are they. So you have to be able to tell her something, you know. Um, that she takes 50% of what, if anything is sold. She works very hard at selling your work. Um, and this, this is, in, in this article here too, Brian Clamp talks about how you, you're expected here in the Clamp Art Gallery uh, to do more than just drop your work off and leave. You know, he expects you as a, as a photographer that you have some sort of a presence, something that's going to be good for you and something that's going to be good for him, because that's how he makes his living. All right, so the, the answer to this first question up here is do I need a portfolio is a big resounding yes. I mean, that's the number one uh, piece of this. So let's see if this works. OK. Let's see. Uh, no. There we go. Okay. So I have some quotes up here that I do want to read to you. A photograph is like a cod, which produces a million eggs in order that one may reach maturity. OK, so think of that about your pictures. All right, so you're going to be doing lots and lots of uh, work with your photography to get to that one like masterpiece that will set you off from everybody else and then hopefully bring you in another direction and keep it going. And another one by Dan Burkholder, he's a funny guy if you know him, he said, someone asked me why I always have carry a camera and he said I never took a good picture without one. <laughs> and if you know Dan, that's very, very much him. Um, and he is never without a camera. Uh, we, um, when he travels, of course, for his travel, for his travels, any workshops, of course, he's always shooting. But when he just goes out to the diner or to lunch or gets up in the morning, gets washed, gets dressed, and on his neck goes his camera. Okay. So the first thing you have to do is define yourself and kind of figure out what what you want to do. 
You know, wh where do you fit in on all this? If you're someone that just likes to take pictures but you don't want to work that hard, then maybe you just want to enter competitions. Um, you don't want to get a gallery to represent you because they won't. Um, even into a, into a cooperative gallery, you may not have the right portfolio there. So you have to figure out who you are and what you want out of your photography. All right? Um, you have to set your goals. Same thing. You know, are you, and also, are you a commercial or a fine art photographer? And this article says something nice in here that um, there was a time when commercial photographers were really frowned upon, but they're not so much anymore because commercial photographers are expected to be so much more today than they were because every Joe is out there with a the camera now. You know, they don't have a, a photography a photographer come in to take, you know, some kind of picture for the office. They'll hand the phone or the camera to, you know, a personal assistant and say, snap my picture so I can send it into Ink Magazine. I mean, it's just, it's that, you know, in the hands of, of everybody that, um, and everybody considers themselves a photographer, you know, and if, if they have, you know, taken a couple of pictures, which all they're doing is pushing a button, right? So they're composing, they're making decisions, that's a good thing, but the technical end of it is all being done by the device, okay? Um, you have to do your homework and your scales. Photographers are, in, in general, with uh, compared to all other artists, uh, the laziest of the bunch. <laughs> I hate to say that, but it's true. Um, we don't have to go out. We can go out at any one point, and if our equipment is working and our battery is charged, we can take some decent pictures. A um, you know, a, a, an Olympic diver can't do that. They have to be in their training every day, you know, with no breaks, seven days a week, 365 days a year. A, cl a musician has to practice every day. You have to do your scales. And if you think of it that if you just set yourself a goal, here's one of your goals, that you um, take a couple of pictures every day, uh, you know, if you take one or two pictures every day, at the end of the year you'll have you know, either 365 pictures or 700 and something pictures. You'll have you'll have amassed, you know, um, some maybe some good ones, maybe some bad ones, but you'll you'll have a you'll have at least taken several hundred pictures. Okay, that's what taking one picture or two pictures a day. You should do a little bit more than that. Okay, who's your audience? Who's going to see your work? Do you want this just for your your own personal family records? which is a great way to, to start doing things and getting your, you know, just being happy with what you do because it's personal to you. you. You love these people, you love that dog, and you start with that. And then, again, hopefully it, it grows into something that's more universal and it's not just loved by you. So your audience is going to be um, very important in your decisions, even when it comes to entering competitions. If you're a... If you shoot nudes and you're entering a competition that's going to be hung in the entranceway to a children's library, <laughs> that might not be the best choice. You will, they'll probably say, what a great picture, but oh, we can't, we can't take this. So keep that in mind that it's not that it's the greatest thing because you did it. It's got to be appropriate for the venue that it's going into. <clears throat> Um, and the inventory is something that's really important. You need to know where your pictures are, where your <coughs> files are, um, how to access them, uh, the dates. You know, the, the, these gallerists, the, the ga <coughs> excuse me, the gallery owners, uh, they check all that. They, they ask you for that, and you you know you can't just say, well, I, I, you know, I don't know. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever. Yeah. Well, shooting digitally though, it's all there. Digitally, it's all there, but yeah. if you go back beyond that. Not. <laughs> and that's the other thing. We both teach, too, in, uh, I, in, in, co in college-level uh, photography. And uh, one of the things I find, the first thing I have my students do is turn on their cameras and set the date time stamp. That's very, very important. Yeah. And especially if you're a Lightroom, uh, Aperture, you know, those, those program, bridge, anything, user, that's a great way to be able to sort through your prints. If you have the wrong date in there, you can't, it, it won't work. You know, you have to, you know, get everything set, right? In the book, the instruction book that came with your camera, the, probably the first thing in there is setting the date and time stamp. So make sure you do that and make sure that you, you, it's accurate, okay? 
editing. Those of you that were in this last year know about Fluffy the dog. Um, uh, a couple of uh, quotes here, too. When in doubt, shoot more, edit again. Charles Traub, Tra uh, Traub from the Do's and Don'ts of Graduate Studies, which is a really good list. Uh, your first 10,000 photographs are your worst. <laughs> okay, Henry Cody Abrisson, and that's really true if you think about it. Um, so you really need to get out there and do some conscious, you know, 10,000 pictures, you know, not just no, mindless stuff. It's, it's mindful shooting and uh, shooting with a purpose that will, you know, once you start with this, it will, it will see, it will change after 10,000, I guarantee. But the editing um, with Fluffy the dog, you know, you ha I get, we've said it before, you have that special someone in your life or the dog or whatever that, you know. Mm -hmm. Grandchildren. Um, grandchildren are, are a big offender here. Uh, <laughs> no matter what they're doing, they're beautiful. And this picture is perfect. You didn't see the arrow, the tree coming out of their head, or the little the hands coming through the side, or something else that's like a major, the, the horizon that's doing this, you know, because you're only looking at your loved one. So what you need for this, this type of thing is you have to detach yourself from that Fluffy the dog. You have to take yourself, you have to take it out of the picture, you have to be brutal with yourself and ask yourself, do I really need this in my portfolio? Is this, because, is this here because of me, because I want it, or is it here because it makes my other work look really wonderful? And nine times out of 10, Fluffy the, Fluffy's gotta go. It's gone. Okay, so what you need is a partner. You need somebody who is going to really be honest with you and tell you the truth and, and this can't be your mother, your husband or wife, your kids. It's gotta be somebody, another photographer who's in the same boat with you. Um, here's my partner right here. So we tell each other all the time that really stinks. You know, like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, or we, or we both, uh, sometimes we both take the same picture not knowing it. And then it's like, we can't, we can't use that. You know, right. so we, you have to be careful what you shoot, who you're shooting with, that you don't, a lot of you go out on trips, you know, shooting trips, and you want, you come back and you wind up taking the same pictures that everybody else did in that group. We just did that. Yeah. <laughs> we, did. we went to, we went to uh, Cuba. And, yeah. and, <laughs> oh, you were at the website? Yeah. Was, uh, they, yeah. Look, they look almost the same. Dry plants. Oh, that's, that's, that's another one, but yeah. that's, that was yeah, right. That was different. <laughs> that, that was something that we did. He's saying dry plants is, the one, is another one that we did that we didn't know each other was, was doing this. And then when we got together yeah. to look at work, we're like, oh. I thought you guys were on vacation. No, not that one, no. but the Cuba one we did. No. And, you know. to, and to be, make a distinction, her, hers were dried plants, mine was dried food. There you go. They're okay. different. So, <laughs> or as I called it, dead, dead food. Yeah. Dead food, yeah. So, yeah. And that was a big surprise because we hadn't seen each other's work at all. And, you know, we were both off doing our, we, we had the show, it was scheduled in Huntington, and we, you know, we were working in our own spaces doing it. And then when we came um, uh, together to make a card for the show, she brought some images. I had some images, and I'm like, "This is really spooky." I mean, they—they they are really uh, looks like one person did this. We even hung them like that. We mixed them yeah, we all put up. Yeah, them all so together. People didn't, you didn't know who was no who. Clue. No clue. We've been hanging around too long. I know. Well, we we went to it at the the, uh, the cemetery in, in Cuba. We went the last day. We went and we there was this huge cemetery in Havana, and we so we walked around. They gave us about an hour, so we're all running around and taking pictures. And, and we weren't together. And we were not together. I was, you know, by my she was by herself. It was like we get to put to, put the show together for for the gallery, and uh, and I walk into and on on her table is a pair. I said, is that mine? <laughs> did you, did you have my, how did I, how'd you get my picture? Same thing. Same thing. It was the, a little shelf inside a mausoleum that, you know, you really had to look for, sort of. And yeah. it was the same exact picture taken from the same viewpoint. And it was like, oh, my God, this has got to stop. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was pretty, pretty, pretty weird. <laughs> so that happens, but, you know, anyway. So get yourself a good editing partner, somebody who's honest with you. And um, it, it, the you know that saying, what is when in doubt, out. That really works here. So as photographers, yeah. we have you know 
tens of thousands of images. So you should be able to eliminate something without like falling apart with it. You, know? right. you don't have to throw it away and be gone with it forever. You can keep yeah. it secret. And it's also easier to do if you live with it for a while. You can't make that decision right away because you've, you've taken those pictures, you took them for a reason, you must have liked something about them. And you know, the next couple of weeks, you're going to think they're wonderful. But if you look at them a month down the road, you're going to be better able to distinguish, you know, the ones that you took just for sentimental reasons and the ones that were really fine art. Yeah. One one uh, sentence here from this um, Sean Stone article. He talks about um, editing. How important this is, these are different points that he brings up that are important. Um, editing. So once you've decided that you've do have something worth showing the world, you'll need to select a finite set of pictures. I find it helpful to edit using tiny prints the size of playing cards. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a printer and you're not a printer, just bring your card to you know, a CVS and have some like 4x5 or 5x7 prints made up, work prints. This is just for kind of looking at what's there. Um, mm -hmm. You might start with a couple of hundred of them spread out on the floor or a table and be open-minded about the process. Rather than thinking about how and when photographs were made, let the, pho let the photos guide you. Okay, Look for photographs that naturally go together and add up to more um, and add up to more than the sum of their parts. Okay, A manageable number there, he's saying, is about 30 to 40, and that's a good beginning part. And then you'll, have, you'll be set for wherever you want to take your portfolio. Some places ask for no more than 15 or, or between 20 and 30. So you'll have the right number, then you'll, you'll do another edit, you know, um, you'll, you'll do another edit. The other thing that's important is the sequencing of the order that you put them in, because that can make, uh, make or break a portfolio. All right, You want to have your best work in the beginning, but you also want it to have a nice flow so that as people are looking at your work, whether it's spread out on a table, and that's what you would hope for, or if they're kind of summing through or looking at files on a screen, that it makes sense that it's in order. It's in some sort of order that you put it in. Very, very important. Anything else there? No, I think that's it. OK. All right. Um, matting, I see this beautiful screen that uh, they have here, this uh, digital screen. And uh, they actually have a real mat on there. So I, I'm. I'm Presuming that it comes with the with this digital uh, the digital frame, um, lots of galleries. When you go to them now, there's no frames. There's no there's no frames. There's no mats. Some of the things are pinned up to the wall. Some of the things are uh, hung with magnets. Some are um, mounted on uh, plexi. That very expensive uh, kind of fusion mm -hmm. or display metal. they yeah. do, or metal, or something like that. But that all goes back to your vision. What do you want for your picture? You can't just say, I'm going to do it with thumbtacks because I don't want to spend any money on a mat. I want to do it with, um, you know, it's, it's what's best for the picture and what's best for the, for the entire group of what you're trying to, to show. And if you are going to do it, um, take, a, you know, take a look at what's out there. Go to the galleries. Do you all go to galleries? OK, I'm right. Chelsea? Okay, museums. Yeah. All right, yeah, that's really good because you really need to know uh, what's out there and what other people are doing. And this is how you get really good ideas. Okay, so don't be afraid to take a take an idea from from a place. We'll take questions later on. Don't be afraid to um, take a concept from a, a place, a presentation, a method. I mean, I'm looking at that and I'm getting all sorts of great ideas of what I would like to do next. Okay. Um, so the look is, gonna, is going to be important to, to how your work is presented. We had somebody come into Soho Photo um, with a portfolio uh, last week or two weeks ago. And he had, um, he's a member, and he had some pieces that he's, work, project that he's working on now. And he had one piece that was completely finished. And it was on that, it was in that beautiful lamination, you know, printed on metal and laminated with with plexi or whatever they do. Uh, and it, the, the finished piece was just absolutely stunning. And I would, never would have gotten that from looking at just his other prints. The prints were good, so we could see the concept. But then this final piece that th this is how I'm going to do all of them, just put it way over the, just put it over the top. So and it was the perfect solution to the types of pictures that he had. So you want to keep that really 
you know, you know, and that fourth thing on there, it's really, you, you can't cheap out there. Um, you can make deals with people, maybe they'll do something for you, come up with your own method of doing something or, or whatever, but um, you really want to, you know, not put like a, a Michael's frame around something if you can um, avoid it. And yeah, they know. fall off the wall really They fall easily. off the wall, yeah. they come apart. <laughs> And think about it, if you're going to put a price tag on there, three, four hundred dollars for your print, and some person who buys it takes it home and the glass pops out, that's going to be the last print they buy from you. So you got to think about that. And the gallery won't accept it. Okay, so your final goal there, goal there too, is like, where is it going to go? If you're just doing something that just to hang up in your bathroom at home or your living room, that you can put whatever you want up. But when you're thinking about a museum or gallery, um, a co-op gallery or a commercial gallery, you have to really, you're responsible for doing all that. They don't do it for you, okay? Uh, your websites are very important. Um, you have to have one. They're so easy to do now that, um, you know, you can get, I know for the requirement here, you have to have an Instagram and a Facebook account and you have to post to it all the time. That is so important, I can't stress it enough. Um, this person here, Chris Hankey, uh, he won the top award in Soho Photo Gallery in the Crappy Camera Competition a few years ago. And this is why he won. I'm gonna show you his website. So the, the, it was a $500 cash prize sponsored by the Holga people, the people that make the Holder, ca Holder cameras in China. So we would send them the files. These are the people in the show who used Holger cameras. Now you pick your winner. So what they did was they went to every uh, entry that we sent to these people and they Googled them and they looked for their websites. And they picked him because of what they found here. And if I can find, what's it called? I don't remember which one. Oh. Full paper moon. Let's try um, no everything folding. Let's try everything folding. Is that it? That's not it. I, sorry, I, sh I knew this. <laughs> lightscapes? I think it's lightscapes. Oh, oh yes, was that the one with the black one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so what go. they saw there, it, this picture over here. Oh yeah, there's a uh, where was that thing, David? Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't work on here. Huh. Okay. Nothing. It's this one. <laughs> this is the one that got into the show. This one he submitted along with a few others, but it got into the show. But the reason why they picked it was they went through this young man's website, and they saw all of these uh, portfolios that he has in there. And not all of them, but most of them, when you click on them, you see these bodies of work. You see how they're all related? This is a really important thing to do. You can't just be a one-shot wonder. You have one great picture, and then five years later, you know, you make another one that's maybe not as good as this one, but it's okay. And you put that, you know, you're kind of amassing that that type of work. Here, he's working on a, on a specific project, and it's obvious here. And there's a span of time that goes in between these. So this is something that's very important for you as photographers to to incorporate into your work. Okay, because people do look at it. They do go to the websites and they do, um, you know. Yeah, and just to know, if you, if you want something real quick, if you, you know, um, I just did an Adobe Spark page. Didn't know what it was, it came, there was an email, I got it. And Adobe allows you for free to load your images in groups and you can label the groups. Um, and, uh, and you can put, I don't know how many, I have uh, probably six, four, five or six bodies of work there. And, uh, and it, you get a, um, an address, and, and, you know, a, uh, a website address. You go there, they look for your name, and, it's, and there's your work right there. So if you want something right now while you're learning to do an actual website, this is a really easy thing to do for now. What is it called again? Uh, uh, Adobe Spark. So this is the other thing, you know, groups like this, you get you, you get information from other people. So that that's also really good. 
Okay, uh, my website, I have it on there, but I'm not going to show you. But basically, the funny story with that is I got a call out of the blue from uh, a, an email from someone wanting a particular photo, and it was a, um, a silver, uh, silver gelatin print, and I could not find it. I could not find it, and I, she was really interested in buying this if I could make it the right size for her, and I could not find it. I was moving. <laughs> couldn't find the negative I couldn't find any I couldn't tell her anything so I lost that because of that so you want to that goes back to keeping a, a good inventory so and keeping your website current okay so um, should you use have a digital file portfolio or should you have a print portfolio and what do you think is the best both there you go that is the answer. <laughs> trick question right here right there both both yeah, you, both is really best to have. You need both. It's not even what, what's good and what's bad. You need both because no matter what you're doing, even if you're doing like what we do, alternative processes and experimental things, you have to be able to show someone the file. And when you get into a show, immediately that you get this thing, send me your file for Instagram. Send me your pictures for Facebook. Send me your picture for our website. Send me, and you have to have it you know, there and available. And you have to have the print. So you want to make sure that you're able to say this print is an archival pigment print, a silver gelatin print, a C print, if anybody does those anymore, um, a, a, a cyanotype, whatever the, the process is that you made, the, that you, your final print that they're going to put up on their wall for you or give you an award for, or someone's going to slap down their credit card and buy something from you, you have to have all that available, OK? Um, what to include and exclude. You just want to get stuff out of there that doesn't make any sense. If it's a body of work, don't just throw things in there for, uh, you know, for no purpose. Make sure that there's a reason why you're putting your, you know, a body of work together. And you want to keep it simple and easy for people yeah. to read. I think the temptation, too, with digital files is to just throw everything in because you've got them. You didn't have to print them. They're all there. But it's just as, it's just as important to, to curate your, your digital file, whatever, whether it's a website or a Spark page or whatever, um, make sure it looks good, as good as, as your print portfolio looks. Yeah, we've been sent links from people say, please take a look at our work. And you go there, and it's a Flickr page or whatever, and there's like 10,000 photographs there. So I just tr turn it right off. It, you, you can't look at it. You, you know, show me five pictures. Show me, show me what you want me to see. Don't show me every picture you ever took. Mm -hmm. Even with the prints, we get people coming into Soho Photo who has a very, very specific portfolio policy of submissions. And that's online. It's on their website. You can look at it and you can see what's there. They ask for, I think it's 15 to 20 um, images prepared the way you want them to be shown. So if you have your work matted, they expect them to be matted. If they are going to go up with magnets, you need to make a note of that and tell them that these do not go into a frame or these, you know, whatever. You have to let them know because they can't make it up. And they won't tell you what to do. Well, these pictures should be done like this. That, you know, it, that's up to you. They also have to be final, um, <coughs> final prints, not work prints. And, I mean, unless a gallery is asking for a work print, don't give them a work print. You've got to give them the good stuff, all right? So your workflow, okay, there are no rules for good photographs. There are only good photographs, and that's Ansel Adams. So again, if you're looking for a formula, forget it. It's not there, all right? Um, to yeah, I consult love this the, one. What? I love this next one. Uh, to, consult the rules of of, to consult the rules of composition before making a picture is a little like consulting the law of gravity before going for a walk. Okay, Edward Weston. And it really makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you don't just go and do something with your own sensibilities and you're waiting for someone to tell you how to do it, it's never going to happen. All right? You really have to just, like, go there, do it, and then, then study. You know, make sure you study and, and you know what you're doing. So if you're working in Lightroom, Bridge, and, or Aperture, or whatever, make sure you understand how to use it. We, you know, we're not octopus, octopi, you know, we make one picture at a time, you know, okay, you can only do that. So concentrate on that one picture. And then hopefully from there, it's going to grow into something else. Your ideas from one great picture may spark 10 more ideas in your head of things that you 
make your list of things you want to go do, and that it'll grow from there. Uh, the editing, again, very important, and you want to make sure that you're not just repeating yourself over and over again. So when you get that one good shot, that's great. Put it away. Go to the next one. Um, you want to categorize your work, landscapes, portraits, still lifes, things like that. Commit to something. You may be working as a you know portrait photographer for 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 a certain project. You don't. Um, don't eliminate if a great still life comes up in front of you. Take that picture too, but stick to your stick to that uh, project that you're working on and see it through. And the quality counts. Um, I know even even uh, with this program, we saw uh, the prints that we handed in last year for last year's uh, portfolio competition for here to get, to get the show over there. Very very yeah. very varied degrees of quality. All right, so the paper you choose, don't pick the cheapest paper you can find to print it out on. Don't go to Costco to have your print made um, or CVS, okay? You, you, this is something where it's going to, you know, a, a custom print is expensive, but there's a huge difference between something that was printed by a professional and something that was printed by a machine just pushing a button and just kind of put, you know, spitting out a word print on, on a cheap stock, okay? So the quality really counts. You judged on that. You know, if you show up and you're, you know, you're dressed in, in, in rags or whatever, people are going to think something of you. If, if your work comes out of you and it's, it's of a lower standard, you say, well, if I get into this gallery, I'll do it better. You, it won't happen, okay? We had somebody come in just last, last time, too. Last time was a big time. Uh, they came in, and they had work prints, and not even good work prints. And they were, they were funny, you know, funny color, and they were, crook they, they were just not good. They were out of focus. And uh, then when the person was spoken to, they said, oh, I just thought you just wanted to see, you know, just see some pictures, before, you know, and then I'll make the good ones when I become a, when I become a member. And I was like, no, no, we need to know that ahead of time, all right? So keep that in mind. So the rules, uh, Thomas Werner was a, I think he's at Parsons now, he came uh, to Photo Photo and gave a talk and he, uh, he, he teaches there now. He used to own a gallery and he said, um, but now with, with the school, a stu student approached him in the hallway and asked him, um, can you look at my portfolio? And he said, okay. So the kid whips out his phone and he's going through his, uh, his pictures and he said, no, 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 I don't want to see your pictures, I want to see the prints. And he goes, what prints? He goes, your portfolio. You asked me to look at your portfolio. He goes, those aren't, th that's not my portfolio. This is my portfolio. Those things are just printouts. So, so it's, it's a whole new world, <clears throat> whole new world out there now. And, um, and you, know, you know, the young ones that we that come across in the school have never made a print. They don't, they never even look at prints. They look at, their whole world is online, yeah. which is something you want to consider too. Um, you know, that may be the route that you take, okay? But if, if you do want your work in a show that shows prints, you have to be able to give them a print. You can't give them a file. Uh, so you need to know the reason uh, of what you're doing. You have to know the rules. You have to follow them extraordinarily carefully. You have to read it 100 times. You have to look at, and this is with anything in life, you know, with this program getting into this program. You have to follow the rules. We have sent away people, more people who were more annoyed at us because they didn't follow the rules. We asked for 15 prints, they came in with five. We asked for prints, they came in with a book. We asked for you know something else and they came in, you know, we asked them to be there at 10 o'clock, they come at 12 o'clock. And can't understand why you just can't do this. So, this is the type, you don't want to get the person who's going to be making a decision about you annoyed. <laughs> Think that's about a, it. That's a good rule for life in general. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> you also, like even with competitions, competitions are a great place if you are someone that shoots and you have like categories of pictures, but you don't have enough for a whole body of work, like 15 to 20 pictures, but you have you know, two great florals or whatever. And you see this competition that's asking for florals, and you can submit you know, any number. So you're going to send your two pictures in. If it gets in the show, and they ask you who to send you the print, and they ask you, 
send it in a frame, a, a black frame. Don't send it in a white frame. Send it with a mat that has at least two inches around it. Do that. If they say Plexi. they want plexiglass instead of glass on top of it, there's a reason for all of this. We at the galleries have to unpack things. We have to hang things. And if things come in and it's this steel frame that with, with glass on top that weighs 50 pounds, we have no way of like dealing with this okay? without a lot of headache for somebody. The other thing is packaging, how you package your work. We get things that come, that come to us that are packaged that you could drop it from an airplane and nothing would happen to it. It's got like It's a box layers, is big and the print is like this, yeah, you know? Layers and layers and layers of, of bubble wrap. And, and worse than that, those noodles, the, those the noodles, peanuts. Yeah. Yeah. I, had, I was at one point accepting work to come to my house. And um, I had a cat. So I opened this one box, and in the middle, it was in the winter, the, the noodles went everywhere, and my cat ran through. That he's had, he was, you know, all static. He was covered with, with the noodles, and I was like, I don't know what's in this box, but I'm, a, I don't like this person, and I don't like, I don't like this print. So yeah, uh, you, you want to make sure that if it says, it says it in there in the rules, make sure you do it. It's really important. You can get eliminated and not even know it. We will tell you at photo at Soho Photo. We will tell you what you did wrong. Some places will just hand it back to you and say sorry. <laughs> um, put this in here because this this is the, uh, the Soho membership. The Soho membership form. This is what it looks like. It's very short. It's not very long, and they ask you for certain things. And they're asking. This is what we're going to look at. See, 12 to 20 images. Uh, this is an old one, so. The newer one has been updated, it may change. We want to see your skill as a photographer, your ability to edit your work, your ability to present exhibition quality prints, and your print should be unframed but appropriately matted or presented according to your vision as though you were preparing for an exhibit. Slides, discs, or books? No, no slides. slides, discs, or books, please. We're asking for this. And you just can't believe that. Maybe people come in with a book. Hey, look at my book. Um, the dues are on there, that what it costs to do, all that is on there, and it tells you, you know, what you have to do. So again, there are the, there's the instructions, and make sure that you follow them. And like some of them are simple like this, some of them are more complicated. Some of them require you come in and you have an interview, you have an appointment time. Another thing in here, the other gallerist says the, the biggest thing that bothers her is people just dropping in, just coming in. Yeah. And that that's kind of like saying that, I know you're not doing anything, so you can sit there and look at my work for another couple of hours, and that'll be <laughs> fine. OK? Uh, themes. You're going to see this a lot, a cohesive body of work. What is a cohesive body of work? Anybody know? As a link. A collection. A collection. OK. There's one theme to it. And give me a theme. Tell me, the, tell me a Boats. theme. What? Boats. Boats. OK. But even that is kind of broad. Yeah. That would be like saying cars. Cars. New York City. Give me a theme. Recognizable style. It's something with a recognizable style. Yep. So style is all part of it. But a theme has got to be something that um, it's like the title of a book. All right. And then everything that all the pictures that are in that one theme need to follow that. So boats may be the start. Like, you know, here we, here we are up here with theme and then we have boats. OK? And then you narrow it down a little bit more. Maybe um, sailboats and narrow it down more. Um, sailboats in dry dock. Sailboats in dry dock that have been graffitied or something like that. See how it, the, the, it goes down into a point? And you want to get something very specific so that if one of those pictures were taken out of that theme or that, out of that body of work, anybody would be able to come along and say, oh, this belongs here. Because not that they're all the same or they're repetitious. OK, I think I have that in there. Re related but not repetitious. There's a fine line there, too. You know, We've seen lots of portfolios come in <coughs> that have maybe people in them. And they're, they're all wearing the same clothes in every picture. So this means this person went out for one day and did, did some kind of shoot with, on the street or with a model or with somebody. <laughs> and you know, we're looking at 30 pictures of the same thing. You know, and the big question that comes up is then, can they do anything else? 
Can they do anything better than this or more? Um, so again, you want to start with a broad subject and then target it down, get your point of view across. The process is really, you know, um, really important, and we're going to skip the examples. All right? This is a very important part here, though, just your concept of what you want to do. Also, I ran that crappy camera show for 20 years, and I, I spoke with all the judges. So getting to sit with the judges and watching them, this is before computers, getting them, uh, li listening to what they're was in their head as they're viewing, you know, 1,500, 2,000 pieces of work for the show that, that, they, that they have to pick 50 from. Um, almost all of them said, why is Lois, why does this person have five pictures and they all look like they belong together, like, like that Chris Hankey portfolio over there? And then there's Sandra's. How come she's got a landscape, a still life, a, a, you know, a tulip, a, a, you know, an abstract? How come hers are all like, you know, disjointed? And I would have to tell them, it, for this competition, it doesn't matter. They, you, you pick your favorite out of one of these, and, and that's it. And they would, they would all say the same thing. And it really kind of stuck home with me that a judge wants to see, and people want to see, some thought that goes into the whole body of work, the five pictures that they're going to get to look at. They want to see that they're related. It's a much stronger portfolio that way. And it's, you, get, you, you kind of gain power through, um, through the multitudes there, through, through, through having, having the related body of work. Each piece becomes more powerful. If you have five <coughs> wonderful pieces and two <coughs> crummy ones, those two crummy ones are going to pull down those five. Those five are not going to pull up the crummy ones. All right, so there's some, you know, some really, that came right from like, I, you know, 20 different judges, 20 different main, main people in photography who did this all said the same thing. They like to see, so when you're entering competitions, think about that. You can, um, you know, you can enter competitions, most, most of them, you can enter them more than once. So if you have a strong still life collection and it's an open, Call, you can submit your five still life pieces and then resubmit again and put your landscapes in too. So they're they're separate and they're not all jumbled up together. Does that make sense? Okay. Anything else here? No, okay. just I think if I were judging and, and I saw five different images and one was really good, I wouldn't know if that one was an accident. You know, sometimes you get lucky and you get and you wind up with a really good image and then you, you try to live off that image, you know, <laughs> for years and it, that doesn't work. You need you need more. You need more to go with it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here are some resources. I mean I can send this to you, Deborah, and you can send this out. Um, this photographmag.com is the is that little booklet that comes out. Um, all the galleries have it and it lists all of the uh, there you go. Photography. Everybody, just photographing. Just take the it. There you go. <laughs> it lists all the um, things going on, photography related in New York. All the galleries are represented there. Uh, a lot of good, um, a lot of good uh, resources in there too. Coursera. Now I got Coursera.org from Deborah. She sent it to all of you. It was last year. Uh, it's a place where you can. It's an online school. It's free. And they had a terrific course that I took. Let me see if I can pull that up. Where did I put that, Coursera? Let's try this way. Yeah. No, no, you can't think. Coursera, I knew I had that. Okay. Okay. So. Seeing Through Photographs was uh, put out by the um, curator of the Museum of Modern Art. So I uh, took this, and it's, it's timed. You get two weeks to do each module. And I'm just going to show you this little, um, quiz. You have to take quizzes. <laughs> and I got here, Miss Cocky over here. I thought that oh, I don't need to look at this stuff. I'm just going to take the I'm going to take the ten question quiz. I think I got three out of seven, <laughs> and I have to send back to the beginning again. I said okay, so now I know 
Now I know. But I don't say their little introductory where they explain what's going on thing. Discussion. Course information, course info. Maybe. Um, introduction to scene. All right, so maybe this is a two. Introduction. But you can't get to it from here. Is that one of those things? <laughs> um, it's hard to get into websites from. Uh, I, I oh. was in it. I thought I was there already. <laughs> this is just the syllabus. They're just showing some of things. But it was excellent, and and it was all about modern. You know what's going on in photography today, and they had videos and they had interviews with photographers. I learned so much from that that thing, and you know then. You know, make sure you take notes while you're watching their thing, and make sure you take notes when you're reading the big bibliography that they give you that you have to read. It's, but it's excellent. This one is just about um, photography. There, there's all sorts of courses there. I mean, there mm. There's some wonderful things. It was, was like a really Linda, good. Linda.com thing. Or it's not similar? a no, no. It's not a Linda.com. It's a real course. I mean, there. It's a oh. six-week thing, and you can do it anytime you want. But each module, you have to finish up. Um, you have to finish up within two weeks, or they send you, they start hounding you with emails. And you can also <laughs> take it for credit. You, you pay a few bucks, and you, you can take it for credit. You can just take it for yourself. Um, I think it's $15, something like $15 to take it for credit. And that way, it, it remains at any time. You get a certificate. You could show somebody, you know, show your boss, hey, look, I took this course, you know, blah, blah, blah. If you take it just for yourself, you know, if time runs out and you don't you don't finish the course, you, it's done. You start again. Okay, okay. Well, we're at at a time, especially for our uh, um, live stream. So, by live streamers. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, BNH has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.